तो दोस्तों आज की इस वीडियो में हम बात करने जा रहे हैं मुआना टू नाम की इस मूवी के बारे में दोस्तों कई मूवी के एक तरह से सिक्वेंस में दो हज़ार चौबीस में देखने को मिलने वाले हैं तो उन्हीं में से ये जो मूवी हमें देखने को मिलने वाली है सेकंड पार्ट हमें ये देखने को मिलने वाला है 2025 में तो सारी कुछ जानकारी इस मूवी के बारे में आपको देंगे इसकी रिलीजिंग डेट कास्टिंग प्री प्रोडक्शन रिलीजिंग सभी के बारे में आपको जानकारी देने वाले हैं तो वीडियो को लाइक कीजिएगा चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कीजिएगा बेलाइकन दबा कर इसे आल पर सेट कर लीजिएगा अब इसके बारे में हम जानना चालू करते हैं Moana 2, also known as Viana 4 or Oceania 5 in some markets, is an American animated musical fantasy adventure film produced by Walt Disney Animation Studios and distributed by Walt Disney Pictures. The film was directed by John Musker and Ron Clements, co-directed by Chris Williams and Don Hall, and produced by Osnat Shura, from a screenplay written by Jared Bush and a story by Clements, Musker, Williams, Hall, Pamela Ribbon. and the writing team of Aaron and Jordan Candell. The film stars Olai Cravello as the voice of Moana and also features the ensemble voices of Dwayne Johnson, Rachel House, Tamuera Morrison, Jermaine Clement, Nicole Scherzinger, and Alan Tudyk. It features original songs written by Lin-Manuel Miranda, Opatia Fowrai, and Mark Mancina, and an orchestral score also composed by Mancina. The film is set in ancient Polynesia and tells the story of Moana, the strong-willed daughter of a chief of a coastal village, who is chosen by the ocean itself to reunite a mystical relic with the goddess Te Fiti. When a blight strikes her island, Moana sets sail in search of Maui, a legendary demigod, in hopes of returning the relic to Te Fiti and saving her people. The plot is original, but takes inspiration from Polynesian myths. Moana premiered during the AFI Fest at the El Capitan Theater in Los Angeles on November 14, 2016, and was released theatrically in the United States on November 23. The film received positive reviews from critics, who praised its animation, music, and vocal performances. The film went on to gross over 687 million dollars worldwide. Along with Zootopia, It marked the first time since 2002 that Walt Disney Animation Studios released two feature films in the same year, after Lilo and Stitch and Treasure Planet. At the 89 TH Academy Awards, the film received two nominations for Best Animated Feature and Best Original Song. How Far I'll Go, 6A sequel, Moana 2, is set to be released in November 2024, while a live-action remake is scheduled for release in June 2025. with Johnson reprising his role in both plot on the Polynesian island of Motunui the inhabitants worship the goddess of nature Te Fiti a living island who long ago brought life to the ocean using a punamu stone as her heart and the source of her power one day Maui the shape-shifting demigod of the wind and sea and master of wayfinding stole Te Fiti's heart to give humanity the power of creation this caused Te Fiti to disintegrate and Maui was attacked by TK, a volcanic demon. Maui lost both the heart and his magic fish hook to the depths of the sea. A thousand years later, the ocean chooses Moana, the daughter of Motunui's chief Tui, to return the heart to Te Fiti. Tui and Sina, Moana's parents, try to keep her away from the ocean to prepare her to become the island's chief. 16 years later, blight strikes the island. killing vegetation and shrinking the fish catch. Moana suggests going beyond the island's reef with her pet pig Pua to find more fish and find out what is happening, but Tui forbids it. Moana tries conquering the reef, but is overpowered by the tides and shipwrecked. That afternoon, Moana's grandmother Tala shows her a secret cavern of ships and reveals Motunui's people were voyagers until Maui stole Te Fiti's heart. The ocean was no longer safe without it. Tala explains TK's darkness is destroying the island, but can be cured if Moana finds Maui and has him restore the heart of Te Fiti. Having been given the heart by the ocean, Tala gives it to Moana. Tala later becomes severely ill and tells Moana to find Maui before she dies. Moana sets sail on a kamikaze from the cavern along with her dim-witted pet rooster, Hey Hey, who stowed away on it. They are caught in a typhoon and shipwrecked on an island. where she finds Maui, who boasts about his achievements. She demands Maui return the heart, but he refuses and traps her in a cave before leaving on her boat. She escapes and confronts Maui, who reluctantly lets her on the kamikaze. 
They are attacked by Kakamora, coconut pirates who seek the heart, but Moana and Maui out with them. Moana realizes Maui is no longer a hero since he stole the heart and cursed the world, and convinces him to redeem himself by returning the heart. However, Maui first needs to retrieve his fishhook in Lalatai, the realm of monsters, from Tamatoa, a giant coconut crab. While Moana distracts Tamatoa, Maui retrieves his hook, only to find himself unable to control his shape shifting. He is overpowered by Tamatoa, but Moana's quick thinking allows them to escape with the hook. Maui reveals his first tattoo was earned when his human parents abandoned him as an infant, and the gods, taking pity on him, granted him his powers. After reassurance from Moana, Maui teaches her the art of wayfinding, regaining control of his powers, and the two grow closer. They arrive at Tee Fitty's island, only to be attacked by Tee K. Moana refuses to turn back, resulting in Maui's hook being badly damaged. Unwilling to lose his hook again, Maui abandons Moana, who asks the ocean to find someone else to restore the heart and loses hope. The ocean obliges and takes the heart, but Tala's spirit appears, inspiring Moana to find her true calling. She retrieves the heart and sails back to confront T.E.K. Maui returns, having had a change of heart, and buys Moana time to reach Tee Fitty by fighting T.E.K., destroying his hook in the process. Upon being unable to find Tee Fitty, Moana realizes T.E.K. is Tee Fitty, having become corrupted without her heart. The ocean clears a path for Moana, allowing her to return the heart to Tee Fitty, who heals the ocean and islands of blight. Maui apologizes to Tee Fitty, who fixes his hook as well as Moana's boat before falling into a deep sleep and becoming an island. Moana bids farewell to Maui and Tee Fitty, returning home and reuniting with her parents. She takes up her role as chief and wayfinder, leading her people as they resume voyaging, accompanied by Maui. Cast All I I Cravalo at the film's premiere in Samoa in December 2016. All I. I. Cravalo is Moana, who is the curious daughter of village chief Tui and his wife Sina, and is chosen by the ocean to restore the heart of Tee Fiti. Cravalo reprised her role in the film's Hawaiian language version. 7. Louise Bush as young Moana. Dwayne Johnson as Maui, a legendary strong willed yet easily annoyed shape shifting demigod who sets off with Moana on her journey. Rachel House as Tala. Tui's mother and Moana's paternal grandmother. Like Moana, Tala shares a passion for the ocean and the two have a very deep bond. House reprised her role in the film's M. Ori language dub. 8. Tamuera Morrison as Tui, Moana's overprotective father, Sina's husband, and Tala's son. He is chief of Motunui Island. Morrison reprised his role in the film's M. Ori language dub. 8. Christopher Jackson as Tui's singing voice. Jermaine Clement as Tamatoa, a giant, villainous, treasure-hoarding coconut crab from Lalatai, the realm of monsters. Clement reprised his role in the film's M. Ori language dub. 8. Nicole Scherzinger as Sina, Moana's mother, Tui's wife, and chief Tess of Motunui. Scherzinger also reprised her role in the film's Hawaiian language dub. 9. Alan Tudyk as Hey Hey, Moana's pet rooster. Tudyk also voices villager number three, an old man who suggests cooking Hey Hey. Oscar Kitelay as a fisherman. Troy Polamalu as villager number one. Puanani Cravello, Olai Cravello's mother, as villager number two. Production. Development. John Musker. Ron Clements. Directors John Musker and Ron Clements presented footage from the film at the 2016 NC International Animated Film Festival. After directing The Princess and the Frog, 2009, Clements and Musker started working on an adaptation of Terry Pratchett's Mort, 10 but problems with acquiring the necessary film rights prevented them from continuing with that project. To avoid a recurrence of that issue, they pitched three original ideas. 11 The genesis of one of those ideas, the one that was ultimately greenlit, occurred in 2011, when Muska began reading up on Polynesian mythology, and learned of the heroic exploits of the demigod Mui. 
Intrigued with the rich culture of Polynesia, he felt it would be a suitable subject for an animated film. Shortly thereafter, Musker and Clements wrote a treatment and pitched it to John Lasseter, who recommended that both of them should go on research trips. 1213 Accordingly, in 2012, Clements and Musker went on research trips to Fiji, Samoa, and Tahiti to meet the people of the South Pacific Ocean and learn about their culture. 14 At first, they had planned to make the film entirely about Maui, but their initial research trips inspired Clements to pitch a new idea focused on the young daughter of a chief. 15. Clements and Musker were fascinated to learn during their research that the people of Polynesia abruptly stopped making long-distance voyages about 3,000 years ago. Polynesian navigational traditions had long predated those of European explorers, beginning around 300 CE. Sixteen native people of the Pacific possessed knowledge of the world and their place in it prior to the incursion of foreigners. For example, Kainaka Maoli, native Hawaiians, were well aware of the existence of faraway islands, had names for these places, and were interested in exploring them to benefit their societies. 16. This voyaging heritage was made possible by a geographical knowledge system based on individual perspective rather than the European cardinal direction system. 16. The reasons for the halt of this voyaging tradition remain unknown, but scholars have offered climate change and resulting shifts in ocean currents and wind patterns as one possible explanation. 16. Native peoples of the Pacific resumed voyaging again a thousand years later. Clements and Musker set the film at that point in time, about 2,000 years ago, on a fictional island in the central Pacific Ocean, which drew inspiration from elements of the real-life island nations of Fiji, Samoa, and Tonga. 17. Although, Motunui is actually a real islet located south of Easter Island in Chilean Polynesia. 18. Over the five years it took to develop and produce the film, Clements and Musker recruited experts from across the South Pacific to form an Oceanic Story Trust, who consulted on the film's cultural accuracy and sensitivity as the story evolved through nine versions. 19. The trust responded negatively, for example, to a depiction of Maui as bald, and to a proposed scene in which Moana threw a tantrum by throwing coconuts. In response, Maui was reworked with long hair and the coconut scene was scrapped. 15. During the 2015 D23 Expo's panel for Disney's slate of upcoming animated films, Moana's last name was given as Waialiki, but that name was not retained in the final film. 20. Writing. Taika Waititi wrote the initial screenplay, 21 but went home to New Zealand in 2012 to focus on his newborn first child and what we do in the shadows. 22 years later, Waititi joked that all that was left of his original draft was extension, Ocean Day. 22 The first draft focused on Moana as the sole daughter in a family with five or six brothers, 23 in which gender played into the story. However, the brothers and gender-based theme were deleted from the story, as the directors thought Moana's journey should be about finding herself. 13 A subsequent draft presented Moana's father as the one who wanted to resume navigation, but it was rewritten to have him oppose navigation so he would not overshadow Moana. 13 Instead, Pamela Ribbon came up with the idea of a grandmother character for the film, 24 who would serve as a mentor linking Moana to ancient traditions. 23 Another version focused on Moana rescuing her father, who had been lost at sea. 25 The film's story changed drastically during the development phase, which happens with most Disney films, and that idea ultimately survived only as a subtle element of the father's backstory. 25. T.K. was referred to in early drafts of the film as T.E.P., 26 a reference to the Amori goddess Hein Nui T.E.P., who was originally the life-giving goddess Hein Titama, but became the goddess of death upon discovering that her husband, the god T.N.E., was also her father. 27 MUI set out to defeat her in order to bring immortality to humans, but failed and was himself killed. 28. Aaron and Jordan Candell joined the project during a critical period to help deepen the emotional story architecture of the film. They are credited with developing the core relationship between Moana and Maui, the prologue, the cave of the wayfinders, the Karkamora, and the collector Crab Tamatoa, played by Jermaine Clement. 29 Jared Bush received sole credit as the writer of the final version of the screenplay. 
several major story problems were identified in 2015 after the film had already transitioned from development into production, but computer-generated films tend to have much shorter production schedules and much larger animation teams, in this case, about 90 animators, than traditionally animated films. 25 since Clements and Muska were already working 12-hour days, and Saturdays, directing such a large team of animators, Don Hall and Chris Williams, who had just finished directing Big Hero 6, came on board as co-directors to help fix the film's story issues. 25 The scene in which Maui and Moana encounter the Kakamura is an intentional homage to Mad Max, Fury Road. 25. Casting. Dwayne Johnson played the co-starring role of Maui in Moana. After the filmmakers sat through auditions of hundreds of candidates from across the Pacific, 14-14-year-old high school freshman Olaya Cravalho was cast as the lead character Moana. 30-31 At that point in time, the design of Moana's face and personality was already complete, and Cravalho's obvious physical resemblance to her character was simply a coincidence. 32 During animation production, Disney animators were able to integrate some of Cravalho's mannerisms into Moana's behavior as depicted on screen. 32. The majority of the film's cast members are of Polynesian descent, Olaya Cravalho, Moana, and Nicole Schertzinger, Sina, Moana's mother, were born in Hawaii and are of native Hawaiian heritage, Dwayne Johnson, Maui, Oscar Kaitley, Fisherman, and Troy Polamalu, villager number one, are of Samoan heritage, and New Zealand-born Rachel House, Tala, Moana's grandmother, Tamuera Morrison, Tui, Moana's father, and Jermaine Clement, Tamatoa, are of M. Ori heritage. Animation Moana is Clements and Musker's first fully computer-animated film. 1433 One of the reasons for using computer animation was that the environment, including the ocean, benefited much more from the use of CGI as opposed to traditional animation. 30 For the filmmakers have also suggested that three-dimensional computer animation is well suited to the beautiful sculpturing of the faces of the people of the South Pacific. 35 Eric Goldberg worked on the hand-drawn animation used to depict Maui's sentient tattoos. 36-37 During early development, the filmmakers considered the possibility of making the film with hand-drawn traditional animation, but only a few early animation tests were made in that style. In the final cut, only Maui's tattoos are hand-drawn. 38. Moana was produced in makeshift quarters in a giant warehouse in North Hollywood, together with Zootopia, while Disney Animation's headquarters building in Burbank was being renovated. Musker observed that Moana was similar in that respect to The Little Mermaid, which was produced in a warehouse in Glendale. Production wrapped on October 20, 2016. 39. Music and soundtrack. Main article, Moana, soundtrack. The film's soundtrack was released by Walt Disney Records on November 18, 2016. The songs were written by Opatia Fourai, Mark Mancina, who previously collaborated with the studio on Tarzan and Brother Bear, and Lin-Manuel Miranda, while the score was written by Mancina. 4041 The lyrics are in English, Samoan, and the Tokelauan language. 42 The soundtrack peaked at number 2 on the Billboard 200. 43. Localization. Rachel House reprised her role in the M. Ori version of Moana, and took over the direction of the dubbing. In many European countries, the name of the titular character, Moana, was changed to Viana due to a trademark conflict. The film was released in those countries to bear the alternative name in the title. 44 In Italy, the film was released with the title Oceania, 45 media outlets speculated that the name change was to avoid confusion with Italian pornographic actress Moana Pozzi, 46 47 And Disney Italy's head of theatrical marketing, Davide Romani, acknowledged they were thinking about the issue at a meeting of Italian exhibitors in 2015. 47 Following the success brought by international productions of Disney's Frozen, which led to the release of a complete set album which included all the official versions of Let It Go released at the time, 48 Disney decided to produce a special Tahitian dubbing for the film. On October 25, 2016, at a press conference in Papeete, 
it was announced that the film will be the first motion picture to be fully dubbed in the Tahitian language. 49 This marks the second time Disney has released a special dubbing dedicated to the culture which inspired the film. The first case was The Lion King, 1994, for which the directors traveled to South Africa to cast voice actors for a Zulu dubbed version. 50 The Tahitian dubbing was made available in schools and institutions, but never for the public to purchase. 51. In June 2017, AM Ori language dubbing of the film produced by Mature Media was announced, 52 premiering in Auckland on September 11, with 30 theatres screening it for free as part of M. Ori Language Week. 53 Rachel House, Jermaine Clement, Tamuera Morrison, and Oscar Keitley reprised their respective roles in this version, directed by Rachel House herself. 54 In contrast to the Tahitian dubbing, the M. Ori version was made available for purchase in Australia and New Zealand, and the soundtrack was uploaded on Disney's official Vivo channel. 55-56 in November 2017, a Hawaiian language, Lalo Hawaii, dubbing was announced to be underway, with Olai Cravalo reprising her role as Moana and Nicole Scherzinger reprising the role of Sina. 7 The film premiered on June 10, 2018, 57 and like the Tahitian dubbing, was later distributed for free to schools in Hawaii. It was never released for sale in home media form. 58 Highlighted versions were released later than 2016. Box Office Moana grossed $248.7 million in the U.S. and Canada, and $438.4 million in other countries, for a worldwide total of $687.2 million. One on January 22 and March 16, 2017, respectively, the film reached the $500 million and $600 million marks, becoming the fourth consecutive Walt Disney Animation Studios film to reach both milestones after Frozen, 2013, Big Hero 6, 2014, and Zootopia, 2016. 8687 Although Disney had not disclosed the film's production budget, most of its animated films cost around $150 million. 8889 Deadline Hollywood calculated the net profit of the film to be $121.3 million, when factoring together all expenses and revenues for the film, making it the 12th most profitable release of 2016. 2. North America In the United States, Moana was released during the Thanksgiving weekend. The film played in 3,875 theaters of which a majority of them, 80%, screened it in 3D. It also played in 50 premium large format screens and more than 400 D-box screens. It was projected to take in around $50 million in three days, with $75-85 million in five days, some estimates going as high as $90 million, 1991-92 deadline. Com said the numbers were good for the original Disney film and marked a great rebound for the company in the wake of Pixar's The Good Dinosaur the previous year which had made $55 million over five days off a production budget of $175-200 million. 93. Moana made $2.6 million from Tuesday paid previews which began at 7 p.m., the highest ever for a Walt Disney Animation Studios film and for a non-Pixar Disney animated film. 94 on its opening day, it made $15.5 million, a new record for a Walt Disney Animation Studios film opening on Wednesday, breaking Frozen's record, and the biggest opening day ever for a film released on pre-Thanksgiving Day. 95 on Thanksgiving Day, it earned $9.9 million, a decrease of 36% from its previous day. On Black Friday the highest grossing day of the Thanksgiving stretch it made $21.8 million, a 127% increase from the day before. 96 through Sunday, the film posted a three-day opening weekend worth $56.6 million over its Friday to Sunday debut in $82. 1 million from Wednesday to Sunday, the third biggest three-day Thanksgiving opening 97, behind Frozen and Toy Story 2, and the second biggest five-day Thanksgiving opening 98, behind Frozen, dethroning Fantastic Beasts and where to find them off the top spot. Among all films that did not necessarily open in this weekend but may have played, Moana ranks 6th among 3-day 99 weekends and 5th among 5-day weekends. 
100. The film's opening was considered to be another animated success for the studio after Zootopia and Pixar's Finding Dory posted huge openings, respectively, the same year in March and June. 101. In its second weekend, the film dropped by about 50% for a total of $28.3 million, a smaller drop than Toy Story 2, Frozen, Tangled, and The Good Dinosaur. 102-103 The film managed to top the box office for its third weekend, despite competition from newcomers and holdovers, earning $18.5 million while falling by 34%. It became the sixth film of 2016 to top the box office three times, following Deadpool, Zootopia, The Jungle Book, Finding Dory, and Suicide Squad. 100 for the film was overtaken by Disney's own Rogue One, a Star Wars story in its fourth weekend, despite only a marginal decline. 105. It fell to number six in its fifth weekend, due to competition from for new releases Sing, Passengers, Why Him? And Assassin's Creed despite a small drop again, it grossed $2.9 million on Christmas Day. 106 on the holiday week of December 23, 29, the film finished at number four with a gross of $26 million, which was 14% up from the previous week, despite losing over 300 theaters. 107 it finished at number four in its sixth weekend, going up 42% and 97%, respectively, during the three-day 108 and four-day weekends, 109 it grossed $3.6 million on New Year's Day. It fell outside the top 10 in its eighth weekend, which included Martin Luther King Jr. Day, dropping 33% and 4%, respectively, during the three-day 110 and four-day weekends. 111. Outside North America. Internationally, the film earned $17.2 million in its first weekend from 12 markets, the bulk of which came from China. In its second weekend, the film expanded to a total of 30 markets, adding an additional $33.7 million. 112. In China, the film had a November 25 opening day 113 with $1.9 million from 38,000 screenings. However, it enjoyed a big weekend bump on Saturday even though its screens dipped in Sunday. 114 in total, it scored an opening weekend of $12.3 million, the second best for a Disney animated title, behind only Zootopia. It was number two behind Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Strong social media numbers showed among the highest the studio has seen there, similar to how Zootopia started off slow and later became a blockbuster phenomenon. 115 The film slipped 55% in its second weekend, earning $5.8 million, and $21.8 in total in China. 116 It would eventually earn a total of $32.7 million in China. 113 it had similar successful number one debuts in France, Russia, Mexico and Spain. The film also saw success in Belgium, the Netherlands and French-speaking Switzerland. 112 in the United Kingdom and Ireland, the film faced competition from Fantastic Beasts which was playing in its third weekend and as a result, it posted a low opening of only £2.2 £2 million, $2.8 million, 117. The biggest earning markets to date have been Japan, $45.9 million, followed by France, $35.5 million, China, $32.8 million, the UK, $25.3 million, Brazil, $22.9 million, Australia, $19 million, Germany, $17 million, Italy, $15.9 million, and South Korea, $15.5 million. 118. Critical Response On review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes, Moana holds an approval rating of 96% based on 289 reviews and an average rating of 7.9 or 10. The website's critical consensus reads with a title character as three-dimensional as its lush animation and a story that adds fresh depth to Disney's time-tested formula, Moana is truly a family-friendly adventure for the ages. 119 Subsequently, the film is also listed as number 18 on the website's 100 Best Computer Animated Movies list. 120 On Metacritic, 
The film holds a weighted average score of 81 out of 100, based on 44 critics, indicating universal acclaim. 121 audiences polled by CinemaScore gave the film an average grade of A on an A plus to F scale, 122 while post-track reported filmgoers gave an 89% overall positive score and a 79% definite recommend. 94. Joe Morganston of the Wall Street Journal proclaimed that Moana is beautiful in more ways than I can tell, thanks to the brilliance of more animators than I could count. 123 animator Eric Goldberg received praise from critics and audiences for his hand-drawn animation of Maui's tattoos, which they claimed stole the show from the actual CGI animated motion picture. 124 125 126 Wai Chi Dimmock, writing in the Los Angeles Review of Books, compared the ocean in Moana to the one in The Water Baby, a short story by Jack London, saying that both are animated, one, by the tension between digital and analog animation, and the other, by the tension between an encroaching future and a past in retreat still capable of pushing back. 127. Christy Lemire of RogerEbert.com gave the film three and a half out of four stars, stating, Its dazzling visuals, catchy tunes, enjoyable performances, clever running gags and overall sense of fun. It's all there, and except for a few scary moments it'll delight viewers of all ages. 128 Peter de Bruges of Variety praised the film, calling it a return to the heights of the Disney Renaissance. 129. Critics also lauded Moana for centering on a strong female protagonist whose narrative is not confined to finding a Prince Charming, a contrast to princess characters of past Disney films. 130 Brent Lang of Variety wrote, whereas earlier Disney heroines waited around for their prince to come and save the day, Moana takes it upon herself to embark on a perilous oceanic voyage in order to lift her island home from a curse. It's the kind of adventuring that would have been left for the guys in Disney films of yore. Her journey is about finding herself, not landing a husband. 131. Accolades. Main article, list of accolades received by Moana, 2016 film. Other media. Due to the success of the film, Moana was officially added to the Disney Princess franchise and was the 12th addition to the lineup. 132 according to the official list of the most watched streaming titles of 2021 released on January 21, 2022, by Deadline and Nielsen, Moana ranked as the second most streamed film of 2021 with a view time of 8.9 billion minutes, just behind Luca, 2021, which had been watched for 10.5 billion minutes. 133. Sequel. Main article, Moana 2. In February 2024, it was announced that a sequel will be released on November of that same year, written and directed by Dave Derrick Jr. A 16-second first look at the film was also released. 134 It was originally announced in December 2020 as a television series for Disney Plus before being redeveloped into a feature. 135-136 The film is scheduled to be released in theaters on November 27, 2024. 137 138 139. Live action adaptation. In April 2023, The Hollywood Reporter reported that Walt Disney Pictures was developing a live action adaptation of Moana to be produced by Dwayne Johnson, Danny Garcia, and Hiram Garcia, under their production company Seven Bucks Productions, and Bo Flynn of Flynn Pictures Company executive produced by Olai Cravallo and Scott Sheldon and written by Jared Bush, with Johnson set to reprise his role as Maui. 140. On the announcement, Johnson remarked I'm deeply humbled and overcome with gratitude to bring the beautiful story of Moana to the live-action big screen. This story is my culture, and this story is emblematic of our people's grace and warrior strength. I wear this culture proudly on my skin and in my soul, and this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reunite with Maui, inspired by the manner and spirit of my late grandfather, High Chief Peter Maivaya, is one that runs very deep for me. I want to thank my partners at Disney for their strong commitment to this special endeavor, because there is no better world for us to honor the story of our people, our passion and our purpose than through the realm of music and dance, which is at the core of who we are as Polynesian people. Sean Bailey, Disney Live Action's president of production, 
acknowledged that despite it being considered too early to remake the film seven years after it came out, the idea of working with these fantastic partners to tell such a meaningful story on a live-action canvas, particularly as we celebrate 100 years of storytelling at Disney, is thrilling. 141 All I.I. Cravallo announced via an Instagram video that she will not reprise her role as Moana, but will serve as an executive producer. 142 Thomas Kale was revealed as director in late May. 143 Casting was expected to begin later in the year, but was suspended until November 8, 2023, due to the 2023 SAG after strike. 144 the film is currently scheduled for theatrical release on June 27, 2025 in the United States, 145 though it is expected to be delayed due to the release of Moana 2. 146. See also. House of Moana. MUI, Mythology. MUI, Hawaiian Mythology. Polynesian Narrative. Polynesian Navigation. Polynesians. Austronesian peoples John Edward Musker, born November 8, 1953, is an American animator, film director, screenwriter, and film producer. He often collaborates with fellow director Ron Clements and is best known for writing and directing the Disney films The Great Mouse Detective, 1986, The Little Mermaid, 1989, Aladdin, 1992, Hercules, 1997, Treasure Planet, 2002, The Princess and the Frog, 2009, and Moana, 2016. Early Life Muska was born in Chicago, Illinois, the second one two oldest of eight children in an Irish Catholic family. His father, Robert J. Muska, who worked for over 40 years at Illinois Bell Telephone, died in 2008 at the age of 84. Two and his mother, Joan T. Musker, and E. Lowley, died in 2011 at the age of 81. 1. He attended Loyola Academy in Illinois and then graduated from the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences at Northwestern University, three where he majored in English and drew cartoons for the Daily Northwestern. For after that, he obtained his Master of Fine Arts at Colarts, California Institute of the Arts in Santa Clarita. There he served a two-year apprenticeship with famed animator Frank Thomas, a supervising animator of Disney films such as Peter Pan, 1953, Lady and the Tramp, 1955, and The Aristocats, 1970. Career Musker met Ron Clements during the production of The Fox and the Hound in 1981, where he worked as a character animator under Clements and Cliff Nordberg. Musker teamed up with Clements as story artists on The Black Cauldron before they were removed from the project. 5. Following the green lighting of Clements's pitch for an adaptation of the children's book series Basil of Baker Street by Eve Titus into an animated feature, Musker and fellow story artist Bernie Mattinson were assigned as the original directors while Dave Mishner was brought in as an additional director. Due to a shortened production schedule and multiple story rewrites, Roy E. Disney assigned Mattinson to serve as director or producer while Ron Clements was brought in as another director. 6. While working on The Great Mouse Detective, newly appointed Disney CEO and Chairman Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg issued invitations to the animation staff for their first held gong show session. Demanding only five new ideas, Clements pitched an adaptation of Hans Christian Andersen's The Little Mermaid and a high-concept idea of Treasure Island in Space which were both rejected by Katzenberg and Eisner. The next morning, Katzenberg approached Clements and asked him to expand his initial treatment. 7. With The Little Mermaid in production in 1986, Musker joined Clements in expanding the original treatment into a 20-page rough script, eliminating the role of the mermaid's grandmother and expanding the roles of the merman king and the sea witch. Aiton were later joined by off-Broadway musical composers Howard Ashman and Alan Menken who collaborated on the song and musical score. Nine released in November 1989, The Little Mermaid was praised as a milestone in rebirth of Disney animation by film critics and collected a domestic gross of $84 million, 10 cumulatively receiving $184.2 million worldwide. 11. When work on The Little Mermaid was wrapped, 
Clements and Muska redeveloped their idea for Treasure Planet, 12 but the studio still expressed disinterest. interest. Instead, the two directors were offered three projects in development, Swan Lake, King of the Jungle, and Aladdin. 13 The directors eventually chose the latter, desiring a wacky, faster-paced, and more contemporary mood separate from the previous Disney animated films. 14. Working from Ashman and Menken's treatment and musical score, the two delivered a story reel to Katzenberg in April 1991, which was strongly disapproved. 14. Jettisoning multiple characters and story ideas and adding Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio as co-screenwriters, the production team restructured the entire story in eight days. 15. Released in November 1992, Aladdin received positive reviews from critics and became the first animated film to gross over $200 million domestically. 16. Following work on Aladdin, Clements, along with Muska, resumed their work on Treasure Planet, which was again turned down by Katzenberg in 1993, who disapproved of setting the adaptation of a classic adventure tale in outer space. 12A deal was struck with the two directors to create another commercial film before he would approve Treasure Planet. Rejecting projects in development such as Don Quixote, The Odyssey, and Around the World in 80 Days, they were later informed of animator Joe Haidar's pitch for a Hercules feature, and signed on to the project. 17. During production on Hercules, in 1995, Clements and Muska signed a seven-year contract deal with the studio which stipulated following Hercules, the studio would produce Treasure Planet or another project of their choosing. 12. With Treasure Planet completed in 2002, Clements and Muska later inherited Frady Cat, which was originally a project developed by Dutch animation director Pete Crone. 18 Frady Cat, however, never saw its light of day, as David Stainton, then president of Walt Disney Feature Animation, refused to greenlight the project. 19 It was soon followed with Clements and Muska's resignation from Walt Disney Feature Animation in September 2005. 20. Tamuera Derek Morrison MNZM, born 26 December 1960, is a New Zealand actor who first gained recognition in his home country for playing Dr. Hone Rapata on the soap opera Shortland Street. He garnered critical acclaim for his starring role as Jake the Musheek in the 1994 film Once Were Warriors and its 1999 sequel What Becomes of the Broken Hearted? Outside of New Zealand, Morrison is best known for his work in the Star Wars multimedia franchise, playing the roles of Jango Fett as well as his many genetic clones, including the clone troopers and Jango's clone son Boba. He originated the role of Jango in the 2002 film Attack of the Clones. Morrison would go on to provide the voice of Boba Fett in the 2000 for re-release of The Empire Strikes Back, various Star Wars video games, and he would portray Boba fully in the second season of The Mandalorian, 2019 present, and the spin-off show The Book of Boba Fett, 2021-2022. In 2022, he also had a recurring role in the Black Ops thriller series Echo 3. Morrison is also known for voicing Chief Tui, the father of the title character in Disney's Moana, 2016, and for playing Arthur Curry's father Tom Curry in the DCEU films Aquaman, 2018, The Flash and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, both in 2023. Early life. Morrison was born on 26 December 1960 in the town of Rotorua, on the North Island of New Zealand. He is the son of Hannah Morrison, and E. Stafford, and musician Laurie Morrison. One he is M. Ori, of Te Irawa, Ng Te Wakao, and Tainui, Ng Te Maniapoto, Ng Te Rarua, Wakapapa, and also has Scottish and Irish ancestry. 2-3 His sister was performer Tiny Morrison and his uncle was musician Sir Howard Morrison. His secondary education took place at Wesley College, Auckland, and Western Heights High School, Rotorua. Career Morrison made his film debut in the 1973 film Rangi's Catch, playing the title character. He trained in drama under the New Zealand Special Performing Arts Training Scheme. One of his earliest starring roles was in the 1988 film Never Say Die, opposite Lisa Eilbacher. After this he played Dr. Hone Rapata on the television soap opera Shortland Street from 1992 to 1995, 
He was immortalized when another character rebuked him with the line You're not in Guatemala now, Dr. Opata. In 1994, he received attention for his role as the violent and abusive Amori husband Jake the Mushik in Once Were Warriors, a film adaptation of Alan Duff's novel of the same name. The film became the most successful local title released in New Zealand, and sold to many countries overseas. The role won him international acclaim and he received the award for Best Male Performance in a Dramatic Role at the 1994 New Zealand Film and Television Awards. He reprised the role in the sequel, What Becomes of the Broken Hearted, for which he received the Best Actor Award from the New Zealand Film Awards. Despite the acclaim he received for his performance, Morrison said in 2010 that he felt typecast by the role, to the point that it was a millstone round my neck. For in 1996 he co-starred with Pamela Anderson as Axel in the film Barb Wire. 5. He has appeared in supporting roles in Speed 2, Cruise Control, 1997, and The Beautiful Country, 2004. In 2005, Morrison became the host of the talk show The Tem Show on New Zealand television. In the 1996 Queen's Birthday Honours, Morrison was appointed a member of the New Zealand Order of Merit, for services to drama. 6. He started writing an autobiography in 2009, which he hoped would inspire others to reach for the stars. 7. He released his debut album, Tem, through Sony Music Entertainment NZ in late November 2014. The album consists of covers of songs that his father, and uncle Sir Howard Morrison, used to perform at local venues when he was growing up. 8. Star Wars Morrison became widely known to audiences outside of New Zealand with his role as bounty hunter Jango Fett in the 2002 film Star Wars, Episode 2 Attack of the Clones. Part of the film's plot involves an army of clones created with Jango's DNA, Morrison also provided the voice acting for the clones. 9. He reappeared as a number of clones in Star Wars, Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, and re-recorded the lines of the character Boba Fett, Jango's clone son, in the 2004 DVD re-releases of the original Star Wars trilogy, replacing the voice of Jason Wynne Green. Morrison has since portrayed Jango Fett and his clones in a number of Star Wars video games, all produced by LucasArts. He played the clone commando boss in Star Wars, Republic Commando, 2005, voiced all the troopers in Star Wars, Battlefront, 2004, and voiced both Jango and Boba Fett in its sequel, Battlefront 2, 2005. Morrison reprised his role as Jango in Star Wars, Bounty Hunter, 2002, a game centered around the character, and Lego Star Wars, the video game, 2005, along with his clones, but was uncredited in the latter. He also voiced Boba in the 2006 game Star Wars, Empire at War, and DICE's Star Wars Battlefront, 2015, and Battlefront 2, 2017, the latter of which were produced by EA. Morrison physically portrayed Boba Fett for the first time in the second season of The Mandalorian, 2020, 10 in the show, Morrison portrays an aged, weathered version of the character. 11 Morrison's Fett has heavy scars on his face, and wears dark robes before reclaiming and restoring his armor. Morrison says that with the physically worn appearance, he adjusted his voice to be more gravelly, as if Boba's vocal cords were affected by his past traumas. With the role, Morrison was also able to bring a bit of his own M. Ori culture to Fett's portrayal. In an interview with the New York Times, he said that he wanted to bring that kind of spirit and energy, which we call Wairua, to the role 11 and use that influence in his on-screen fight scenes, both in the hand-to-hand -hand combat and while wielding weapons. In 2020, a spin-off of the hit series The Mandalorian was announced, titled The Book of Boba Fett. 12 Morrison reprises his role as Boba Fett, 12 following Fett's life after the events of the 1983 film Return of the Jedi. The series premiered on 29 December 2021. 13. In 2022, Morrison made a cameo appearance as a homeless veteran clone trooper in the OBWAN Kenobi TV series. 14 and voiced Rex and other clones in an episode of Ahsoka. Other roles Morrison returned to Shortland Street for six weeks in June or July 2008 to reprise the role of Dr. Hone Ropata. In 2008, 
Morrison also appeared on New Zealand's skit comedy television show Pulp Sport, where he appeared in a sketch that made fun of him being cloned. Morrison has appeared in several DC Comics-related films. In the 2011 film Green Lantern, he portrayed a Binsa 15 in 2018 he played lighthouse keeper Tom Curry, the father of the title character, in Aquaman. Morrison reprised the role in The Flash, released in 2023, and Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, which released in December 2023. 16. Personal Life This section of a biography of a living person needs additional citations for verification. Please help by adding reliable sources. Contentious material about living persons that is unsourced or poorly sourced must be removed immediately from the article and its talk page especially if potentially libelous. Find sources, Tamuera Morrison News Newspapers Book Scholar JSTOR, January 2022, learn how and when to remove this template message. Morrison lives in New Zealand and divides his time between filming there, Australia, and the United States. He has an adult son from a relationship in the late 1980s with singer Kim Willoughby from the all-girl group When the Cat's Away, and a daughter with Peter Melbourne. Morrison's partner is Ashley Howden Sadlier, 17 who is of M. Ori descent, specifically T. Ho and Ng T. Poru descent. Filmography Film Year title role notes 1972 Rangi's Catch Rangi 1980 for Other Halves Tony 1988 Never Say Die Elf Winters Maury Young Cop the Grasscutter Sergeant Harris Television Film 1994 Once Were Warriors Jake the Musheek 1996 Barb Wire Axel Hood The Island of Dr. Moro Azazello Broken English Menu Little White Lies Tim Whipping Boy Jack Television Film 1997 Speed 2, Cruise Control First Mate Giuliano 1998 Six Days, Seven Nights Jagger 1999 What Becomes of the Broken Hearted? Jake the Musheek From Dusk Till Dawn 3, The Hangman's Daughter Mauricio or The Hangman Direct to Video 2000 Vertical Limit Major Rassel 2001 Crooked Earth Will Bastian Germain Atia Mahana Clement, born 10 January 1974 2 is a New Zealand actor, comedian, musician, and filmmaker. He has released several albums with Brett McKenzie as the musical comedy duo Flight of the Concords, and created a comedy series of the same name for both the BBC and HBO, for which he received six Primetime Emmy nominations. He has had featured parts in films such as Eagle vs. Shark, 2007, Gentleman Broncos, 2008, Men in Black 3, 2012, People Places Things, 2015, Humor Me, 2017, The Festival, 2018, and Avatar, The Way of Water, 2022. He has also done voice work for Despicable Me, 2010, Rio, 2011, and Rio 2, 2014, Moana, 2016, and The Lego Batman Movie, 2017. In 2014, he made his directorial debut with What We Do in the Shadows, which he also co-wrote, co-directed and co-starred in with Taika Waititi, and later adapted into a show for FX television series of the same name. Early Life Clement III was born on 10 January 1974 in Masterton in the Wairarapa, for and was raised there in a working-class family by his mother and grandmother Mikara with his two brothers. 3-5 Clement is of Emori, in T. Kahungunu, descent through his mother, and a direct descendant of the Rangatira, chief, Araya T. Ama O. T. Rangiti Waiti, who is his great-great-great-grandfather. 6-7 His P.K. father, Robert, was employed at the freezing works and struggled with alcoholism, leaving home when Clement was a child. Robert would later become a stained-glass artist in Midhurst, Taranaki, Jermaine would later reconnect with his father as an adult and now enjoys a strong and loving relationship with him. 8. Clement's mother and grandmother were strong influences on him as a child, inspiring his sense of humor. 
Nine despite having a strong connection to his Amori ethnicity through visiting relatives regularly on trips to various Marais, bans on the Amori language being spoken in schools meant Clement grew up in an almost entirely English-speaking environment. He has talked of his regrets about this and has emotionally spoken of the physical abuse his grandmother suffered at school for speaking Te Rio Amori. 9. He attended Makura College in Master Tan. After finishing school he moved to Wellington, where he studied drama and film at Victoria University of Wellington. There he met Taika Waititi, with whom he went on to form So You're a Man and the Humor Beasts. In 2004, the Humor Beasts toured New Zealand in a stage show titled The Untold Tales of Maui, ten a reworking of the traditional Maori legends of MUI. The duo received New Zealand's highest comedy honour, the Billy T Award. During his time in university, he also met Brett McKenzie, with whom he performed in Edinburgh, thus forming Flight of the Concords. Career Music Clement in 2010 Clement and Mackenzie have toured internationally and released for CDS, Folk the World Tour in 2002, The Distant Future EP in 2007, winner of 2008 Grammy for Best Comedy Album, Flight of the Concords in 2008 and I Told You I Was Freaky in 2009. In 2005 The Concords produced Flight of the Concords, a six-part comedy radio program on BBC Radio 2. They appeared on Late Night with Conan O'Brien. The Late Show with David Letterman and The Late Late Show. After appearing in 2005 on HBO's One Night Stand, the Concords were offered their own 12-part HBO series, Flight of the Concords, which was based on their earlier BBC radio series of the same name. Eleven its first season ran from June to September 2007, and was renewed for a second season, which aired on HBO in the US from January to March 2009. 12 in December 2009, the Concords announced the show would not have a third season. 13. Film and Television Clement has appeared in several feature films. His debut was in the Kung Fu comedy Tonga Ninja, directed by New Zealander Jason Stutter. He has worked with Stutter on two more films to date, the low-budget ghost comedy Diagnosis, Death and the Drama Predicament, based on the book by late New Zealand novelist Ronald Hugh Maury Sun. Clement also has a role in American comedy Gentleman Broncos, directed by Napoleon Dynamite's Jared Hess. This role landed him a nomination for the Independent Spirit Award for Best Supporting Male. Though Gentleman Broncos was almost universally panned by critics, some 14 singled out Clement's performance for praise. In 2010, he voiced Jerry in Despicable Me and appeared in the film Dinner for Schmucks. In 2011, he voiced Nigel in Rio, and in 2012 he appeared as the primary antagonist Boris the Animal in Men in Black 3. In 2012, Jermaine co-wrote, co-directed, and starred in a vampire mockumentary titled What We Do in the Shadows with Taika Waititi. It premiered at the Sundance Film Festival on 19 January 2014. He also reprised his role as Nigel in Rio 2. Clement has starred in television commercials internationally and provided voiceovers for many others in New Zealand. On 5 February 2006, Outback Steakhouse began running a series of television commercials starring Clement during Super Bowl 40 in which Clement pretends to be Australian and feigns an Australian accent. One of the long-running gags of Flight of the Concords is the traditional rivalry between New Zealand and Australia and the differences between their accents. The campaign ended in July 2006. Clement has been involved in award-winning radio work. In 1999, Clement was a Radio Awards winner as writer for Trashed, for Channel Z, Wellington. 15 in 2000, he was given a special Radio Awards commendation for the Sunglass Store. 16. Besides his television work on Flight of the Concords, Clement was a writer and cast member of the television show Skits and Tally Laughs in New Zealand. 1718 Clement, with fellow Concord member Brett McKenzie, guest starred as a pair of camp counselors in Elementary School Musical, the season premiere of the 22nd season of The Simpsons, which aired on 26 September 2010. 19. Clement at Fantastic Fest in 2009. Clement also played the role of a prisoner in a Russian gulag in the 2014 film Muppets Most Wanted, 
a sequel to The Muppets, 2011. Clement was featured as one of 2008's 100 Sexiest People in a special edition of the Australian magazine Who. 20 Fallow Concord member Mackenzie appeared on the same list. In 2015, Clement voiced a mind-reading Fart 21 on an episode of the Adult Swim animated series Rick and Morty, where he performed the song Goodbye Moon Men. 22 Clement also starred in the independent film, People Places Things, which received positive reviews. In 2016, Clement lent his voice to Tamatoa, a giant coconut crab, in the Disney animated film Moana, both in English, and the M. Ori dub. He based the character's voice on that of David Bowie. 23. In 2017, Clement played Oliver Bird in the FX TV series Legion. He also voiced Soren in the Lego Batman movie. In 2019, Clement played the role of a musician in the Belgian film Patrick. His character, a touring musician visiting a naturist camp, was one of the few characters in full clothes for the duration of the film. Personal life. Clement's W.H. No did not have a car when he was a boy, and as a result he has never learned to drive. 24 in August 2008, Clement married his longtime girlfriend, theatre actress and playwright Miranda Menagedis. 25 Their son, Sophocles Ariah, was born in October 2008 in New York City and is named after Menagedis's Greek great-grandfather Sophocles, and Clement's Tipuna Ariah T. Amma O. T. Rangi T. Waiti. 2620 For They Live in Wellington. Filmography. Key. Denotes works that have not yet been released. Film. Year title role notes. 2002 Tongan Ninja 27 Action Fighter, Marvin, also writer. 2000 For Futile Attraction Editor. 2007 Eagle vs. Shark Jared. 2009 Gentleman Broncos Ronald Chevalier nominated Independent Spirit Award for Best Supporting Male. Diagnosis, Death Garfield Oliphant. 2010 Despicable Me Jerry the Minion Voice. Predicament Spook. Dinner for Schmucks Kieran Vollard. 2011 Rio Nigel Voice, nominated Annie Award for Voice Acting in a Feature Production. दोस्तों इसका जो पिछला पार्ट है वो 14 नवंबर 2016 को कुछ लोगों के लिए रिलीज़ किया गया था और 30 नवंबर 2016 को इसे यूनाइटेड स्टेट में एक तरह से रिलीज़ कर दिया गया था 107 मिनट टोटल इसकी रनिंग लेन थी डेढ़ सौ से एक मिलियन डॉलर्स के बीच में इसका बजट था मोहन ने जो कलेक्शन दिया छः सौ मिलियन डॉलर्स का कलेक्शन दिया था जो कि बहुत ही बेहतरीन था और इसी वजह से मैकर से इसका अगला पार्ट कंफर्म बनाने जा रहे हैं और साथ ही साथ वोल्ट डिज्नी स्टूडियो मोशन पिक्चर द्वारा इसका डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन किया गया था तो आप इसे दोनों जगह पर देख सकते हो प्राइम वीडियो डिज्नी प्लस दोनों पर और साथ ही साथ अपकमिंग पार्ट भी हमें एक तरह से डिजनी प्लस पर ओ टी राइट्स के रूप में देखने को मिलने वाला है तो आज की इस वीडियो में दोस्तों इतना ही मिलते हैं अगले वीडियो में